From gleaming blades to thundering warhammers, Skyrim brims with weapons waiting to be discovered. But with so many to choose from, finding the perfect fit for your playstyle can be a quest in itself. That's why today I will guide you on this quest to unearth the most overpowered unique weapons from every category. So whether you're drawn to the swift whisper of an arrow, the barbaric roar of a battle axe, or the potent crackle of magic, there's a hidden treasure out there waiting for you. So grab a tankard of mead, kick back, and let's get into it, wizards. Daggers. Daggers are the weapons of assassins. The Blade of Woe is a prime example, monstrous damage and an enchantment that straight up steals the life out of your victims. But even this legendary blade pales in comparison to the infamous Maroon's Razor. This Daedric artifact is the ultimate assassin's tool for those who dare wield it. However, getting your hands on Maroon's Razor is no easy feat, and you'll have to embark on the perilous quest, Pieces of the Past. Your journey begins once you reach level 20. That's when you'll receive a mysterious invitation to Silas's mythic Dawn Museum. Once inside, Silas reveals his family's shattered legacy, the pieces of Maroon's Razor, and sends you on a quest to reclaim them. But these fragments won't be easily recovered. They're scattered across Skyrim, guarded fiercely by those who won't give them up without a fight. But with a bit of grit, your determination will lead you to victory. With the pieces in hand, your journey is still far from over however, and upon returning to Silas, you'll have to embark on a journey with him to the Shrine of Maroon's Dagon, where the razor can be reforged. Here, Dagon puts your loyalty to the test, instructing you to slay Silas. The choice is ultimately yours, but since we're talking a measly 500 gold, or the most powerful dagger in Skyrim, Silas buddy, it's been nice knowing you. Maroon's Razor delivers respectable damage, however its true strength lies in its chance to instantly kill any adversary. This extraordinary effect elevates it way above all other daggers in the game, letting you cheese almost every enemy with absurd ease. Now there are a few exceptions. Mirak and Karstag won't fall for this trick, and be careful around the Ebony Warrior, since he can reflect that instant kill right back at you. Even with those minor exceptions, Maroon's Razor is still an insanely powerful weapon. However, if you want to take things to the next level, try dual wielding it with another fast ringing dagger, like Valder's Lucky Dagger. Valder's offers a 25% chance to deal critical damage that pairs beautifully with the Razor's instant kill potential. This combo means you can unleash a flurry of deadly attacks without the need for constant recharging. Perfect for the Relentless Assassin. Maces. Where daggers favor finesse, maces embody brutal force, perfect for warriors who relish head-to-head -head combat. And among the most formidable maces in Skyrim stands the Mace of Molag Bal, a Daedric artifact infused with the wickedness of its creator, the Prince of Domination. To acquire this dreaded mace, you'll need to journey west to the city of Markarth. Once there, seek out Tyrannus, a vigilant of Stendar haunted by rumours of Daedric Whispers. He'll desperately ask for your help, initiating the House of Horrors quest. But be warned, the things you'll encounter within that seemingly abandoned house will test your courage, so definitely pack an extra pair of underwear. Tyrannus will succumb to fear, and the Daedric Prince himself will demand you kill him to prove your loyalty. Harsh, but desperate times call for desperate alliances. Once you pass the Daedric loyalty test, he'll send you to lure Logroth the Willful, a priest of his rival Boethia, back to the house. Free Logroth from his Forsworn captors and watch him rush blindly back to Molag Bal's shrine. It's always those overly eager priests, isn't it? There, prepare yourself for the final gruesome confrontation. To claim your prize, Molag Bal commands you to bludgeon Logroth into submission, corrupting your soul with a dark act in return for the mace's terrible power. The mace of Molag Bal strikes with brutal force, outdamaging most other maces within its class. However, its true strength lies in its cruel enchantment. With each blow, you'll drain 25 points of both stamina and magicka, leaving your foes exhausted and vulnerable. What's even more twisted is that if you slay an enemy within 3 seconds, their soul is trapped within a soul gem. 
This makes the Mace of Molag Bal a perfect companion for Azura Star or the Black Star. For every enemy you defeat will replenish its charge, granting you an endless supply of unholy power. This mace has a thirst for fire too, so investing in the augmented flames perks will make its draining effects even more devastating. And for the ultimate boost, combine the mace with Azidal's mask and watch your unholy power surge. Staves where warriors and assassins rely on suspiciously large biceps, mages may find their strength in the staves they wield. And among the most devastating staves in Skyrim is the Sanguine Rose. This Dejic artifact, gifted by the Prince of Partying himself, isn't about icy blasts or searing flames. No, instead, it summons a powerful Dramora to fight right at your side. But to earn this deadly tool, you'll need to be prepared for a night you'll mostly regret and possibly get a restraining order for. To get things started, you'll need to hit level 14 and befriend or at least tolerate a man named Sam Gwaven. Chances are you'll find him causing a ruckus in your local tavern. Agree to his little drinking contest and well, let's just say things will get blurry. You'll wake up in the Temple of Debella with a headache worthy of the gods, a furious priestess yelling about some goat, and the lingering feeling you just committed several crimes against Skyrim and her people. What say you in your defence? Sorry, that last bit wasn't meant to be spoken out loud, I just couldn't help myself. From there, get ready for a crazy quest across Skyrim that rivals even the Hangover movies. It'll involve retracing your drunken steps, offering some very awkward apologies, and eventually a face-to-face -face encounter with Sanguine himself and his peculiar rose. Now let's get into why this rose isn't just for sniffing. Well, with a simple flick of your wrist, you can summon a leveled Dramora to fight by your side. This means he'll skill with your character, getting stronger as you do, putting most basic followers to shame. By level 46, you'll be commanding a Dramora Valkanaz, an absolute powerhouse with tons of health and some serious attitude. <laughs> Even with just 60 seconds of that Daedric mayhem, you can completely change the tide of a fight. And the best part? The Sanguine Rose works great for any build, even if you haven't spent a single point in Conjuration. But if you really want to maximize the chaos, that's where the Conjuration Tree is worth your time. The Atromancy perk doubles your Dramora's duration to a full 2 minutes. And if that's not enough, the Twin Souls perk lets you have two of these bad boys summoned at the same time. Now that's what I call a Daedric party. Swords Swords are an iconic choice for Skyrim adventurers. They suit stealthy assassins, berserker warriors and everyone in between. And while there are many powerful blades to choose from, only one truly deserves the title of Overpowered, the legendary Windshear. This unique scimitar might look unassuming, but it hides a staggering secret. To claim it, you'll need to tread a path of darkness and danger by joining the ranks of the infamous Dark Brotherhood. Their questline is a twisted journey filled with deceit and assassination. You'll need to navigate a world of whispers and poison, proving your worth through cold-blooded deeds. But the ultimate test lies within their final contract. Hail Sithis. You'll be tasked with infiltrating the Emperor's ship, the Kataraya, and there amidst elite guards and the looming presence of the Emperor himself, Winchia awaits, embedded in the very bowsprit of the ship. Now at first glance, Windshear might seem unimpressive. I mean, its base damage isn't anything special compared to other one-handed weapons, but don't be fooled. This scimitar hides a secret that makes it one of the most overpowered weapons in all of Skyrim. You see, with every strike, Windshear has the power to throw your foes completely off balance, staggering them and disrupting their attacks. This alone makes Windshear a force to be reckoned with, as your enemies will struggle to mount any offense as you stunlock them relentlessly into oblivion. But wait, there's more. Bashing with Windshear gives you the chance to completely paralyze your target, sending them tumbling to the ground. From there, well, you can decide their fate with ruthless efficiency. War Axes War Axes embody the warrior spirit of Skyrim, their powerful strikes echoing the land's rugged beauty. 
Yet, while you might expect legendary war axes to litter the frost-covered lands, unique options are surprisingly scarce. However, amidst the scarcity, one war axe shines brighter than the rest. The Dawnguard Rune Axe Forged in the righteous fury of the Dawnguard, this weapon bears a unique enchantment, letting you unleash burning fury upon the undead. If you're ready to claim this artifact, you'll need to seek out Fort Dawnguard, nestled within the rift. Once there, prove your worth to the Dawnguard by completing their initial trials. Then find Florentius, their resident priest, and he'll set you on the Lost Relic Quest. This will take you on a perilous hunt through bandit camps and forgotten dungeons, so be prepared for a fight. And keep your eyes peeled, because within these shadowy lairs, you might just discover the Dawnguard Rune Axe, alongside its mighty siblings, the Rune Hammer and Rune Shield. As you battle your way through undead hordes, the Dawnguard Rune Axe rewards your valour with every swing. For each Draugr, each restless skeleton, and each bloodthirsty vampire you send back to the grave makes the axe blaze a little brighter. Its sun damage increases with every 10 undead creatures you defeat, eventually reaching an unstoppable 100 points. And best of all, thanks to a fortunate scripting error, this scorching power never fades, making the axe a constant force as you battle Skyrim's undead. But to unleash its full potential, we need to look at our skills. Invest in the Augmented Flames perk and Don Azidal's Mask. Both will amplify the weapon's fiery wrath. Battle Axes now you might be tempted by early favourites like the Drainblood Battle Axe or Wuthrad, and honestly they'll serve you pretty well initially. But here's the catch, you can't upgrade them, so as you level up you'll outgrow their power pretty quickly. But fear not, for that's where the Steel Battle Axe of Fiery Souls comes in. Of course, claiming a fiery prize like this won't be easy, and you'll need to navigate the treacherous depths of Ironbind Barrow. Within its haunted halls, you'll face fierce Draugr and some pretty cunning traps, before confronting Warlord Gathric himself. And by Talos, he's a big one. But if you can best him, you'll find the steel battle axe of fiery souls resting ominously upon his throne. And this weapon truly lives up to its name, for with each swing you'll inflict a burst of fire damage, turning your foes into walking torches. And that's not all, its enchantment also traps souls, giving you a constant source of energy to power your adventures. So much like the Mace of Molag Bal, this makes it a perfect companion for Azura Star, or the Black Star. But perhaps its greatest strength is its versatility. With the Arcane Blacksmith perk, you can continually upgrade the battle axe, ensuring that it continues to dish out pain as you level up and face tougher enemies. Great Swords Battle axes are all about brute force, but what if you crave a touch more elegance? Well, as elegant as a giant slab of sharpened steel can be, enter the Great Sword, and a particularly special one called the Blood Skull Blade. This beauty delivers raw power, and a spectacular energy blast that'll knock back your enemies. But naturally, a weapon like this isn't just lying around for anyone to grab. So before you can wield its power, you'll need to brave the depths of Solstheim. Your journey begins at Raven Rock Mine, where an old man named Crecius Carelius guards a family secret. Generations of his blood worked these mines, and he'll reveal the hidden tomb of his ancestor, Gratian Carelius. He'll even entrust you with the key, launching you into the final descent quest. It's a deep dive into an ancient Nordic barrow, so be prepared for tricky puzzles and those pesky Draugr. You might even stumble upon a devious dragon priest lurking within. But fear not, for the reward is absolutely worth the risk. Now, the Blood Skull Blade isn't just about brute force, it holds a unique power that sets it apart. With every power attack, you'll unleash a crescent shaped energy blast, transforming your melee weapon into a surprising ranged threat. And these blasts pack a serious punch, dealing 30 damage. So, if you're a warrior who usually struggles to take down foes from a distance, the Blood Skull Blade is your new best friend. But want to get really creative, then try those blasts while under the effect of the Become Ethereal Shout. You'll become a force-wielding ghost, completely immune to damage while peppering your enemies with lasers. And the best part? This bad boy never needs recharging and can be upgraded, ensuring its power keeps pace with your own. 
some war hammers? If there's a weapon that screams barbarian in Skyrim, it's definitely the war hammer. One good swing can send your enemies flying, or cross them flat like a skeever under a boot. And if you're looking for a warhammer to rule them all, well, you may be surprised to hear that it's not the mighty Volandrun, but something with a hidden edge, the long hammer. Now, you won't find the long hammer enshrined alongside ancient artifacts or one after some grand quest. Nope, you'll need to brave the treacherous depths of Liar's Retreat. This bandit den is crawling with those nasty former, so be ready for a fight. But deep inside, you'll find Rad, a once mighty bandit leader, now just another corpse left behind by the former. And next to him, that's where you'll find the long hammer. Okay, so what makes this warhammer so special? Well, it might look like a simple orcish warhammer, but don't let that fool you. While its base damage might seem a little underwhelming, the long hammer's real power lies in its weight, or rather, its lack of weight. This thing swings as fast as a mace, letting you unleash crushing blows at a relentless pace. And in the hands of a seasoned two-handed warrior with the right perks, it'll batter even the toughest enemies into submission. Even better, unlike many unique weapons, the long hammer is fully upgradable, so its power scales right alongside you, ensuring you're always packing a brutal punch. Oh, and if you crave an absolutely unstoppable rampage, try pairing it with the Elemental Fury Shout. You'll become an unstoppable whirlwind of destruction, smashing everything in sight, faster than any Draugr can react. Bows Bows speak to the heart of stealthy hunters, rangers, and let's be honest, pretty much all of us at some point, because who can resist the allure of the stealth archer? Sure, many bows hit hard, but when it comes to sheer damage per second, there's one clear winner, Zephyr. Now this dwarven artifact isn't simply found, it's woven into the tragic tale of a skilled adventurer named Katria. To begin your hunt for Zephyr, you'll need to unearth the mystery of Lost to the Ages. And you can kickstart this quest in one of two ways. Either read the book, The Ethereum Wars, or simply head straight to the sprawling dwarven ruin of Arkenthams. Just be warned, danger lurks around every corner in those ruins. Intricate puzzles and relentless mechanical guardians will test your metal, so keep your wits about you. But as you delve deeper, you'll begin to find traces of Katria's expedition, a trail of breadcrumbs leading you closer to her tragic end. Follow her ghostly trail, and it will lead you to a treacherous chasm where she met her fate. But fear not, for right there, balanced precariously on a log jutting out over the drop, lies your reward, the legendary Zephyr. So try not to trip, or you might find yourself reenacting Katria's final moments. Now at first glance, Zephyr might look like just another dwarven bow. However, it hides a secret that makes it an absolute powerhouse. It fires arrows 30% faster, making it the fastest firing bow in all of Skyrim. Sure, its base damage is a bit underwhelming, but that lightning fast draw speed more than makes up for it. It'll transform your archery into a relentless storm of projectiles. And best of all, since its enchantment never needs recharging and you can fully upgrade it, that base damage becomes a non-issue. 